This is the 200th video on my channel. And I want to tell you a little story about regret. The regret of choosing to wear this hat for the intro of this video. But more importantly, I want to tell you a little tale. A tale about change. Change. Time for a change. That's been the word and phrase that best describes my life for the last, oh, I don't know, 10 years? Maybe more. From being a lab chemist, to fueling aircrafts, to building houses, to retail sales associate, to door-to-door -door salesman, to finally self-employed. With change comes loss. I've definitely lost my fair share. I have made some bad calls. I have taken some risk. More on that later. I've lost people along the way. Friends. People I considered family. Even myself. This YouTube channel has also had its fair share of change over the years before finding itself. It's taken a lot to get to this point and I want to share some of that journey with you. But to do that, I'm going to take it back to the beginning. Alright, what's up guys? It's been a long time since I've posted anything on here. Well, maybe not that far. My name is Chris Erickson, owner of Showroom Collectibles. If you could see the items that came through my door, or hear the stories that people tell me, <laughs> they would blow your mind. Which got me thinking. What else is out there? Eh, close enough. So, today, I'm going to rearrange the store and set up a small little studio in the back. I have the main set where I run my sales and other shows, and we'll see how that works. But today is the first day uh, that I am going to set this up. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's get to work. So yes, in 2017, the original plan was to make a studio space in the back of my existing business, which was a toy and collectible retail shop. Bought and sold, traded toys from Legos to action figures to much, much more. The studio was going to be used for my online sales. I was among the first to ever do Facebook Live sales, but I was one of the very, very few to even incorporate a little bit higher production value with multi-camera and using software to make it happen, but I digress. Funny thing is though, this actually wasn't the first set or the first studio I ever had. Here's the old set. Whoa. There's like, it's empty-ish. Yeah, this is just like a six by eight room, I think, in the back. If you even want to call this a studio, but I did use it for recording for a web show that I did on another YouTube channel called Toy Kings. Note that blue bin on the floor there. Yes, this was actually one of the chairs that we used for our web show because we couldn't afford chairs. Oh, the memories. Now, remember me talking about how I took some risks? Well... Let's, let's, let's just play the tape. Yeah, I have a lot of opportunities in the near future that I want to pursue and I cannot pursue those with a tie to this store. So what I have decided to do is uh, put the store up for sale. I am going to sell my, essentially my baby. I have some opportunities with Geeks Life and some things that we're, we were, we're going to work on and I want to do that. And I feel that that's my next move. <laughs> you know, in life, that there's just those certain moments, defining moments. Well, uh, that was one of them. This one's actually fake. This isn't even real. This one isn't. This one's real. Um, I don't even honestly know what to do with it. But yeah, selling my store, yeah, that probably wasn't the best thing for me to do at the time. I had that store for about five years, nearly, just about, pretty close. And I gave it up for somebody that I just met six months prior, eight months prior, something like that. Yeah, wow, geez. Because I told them exactly what I wanted to do ultimately and they pulled on my strings. And looking back, it's just, it's, it's clear as day now to cipher things and dig in a little bit more. But there was a puppet master at play. Played me hard. <laughs> but this right here, this is actually a story for another time. 
but it is one of those situations where, yeah, it was a bad thing that happened, but it sort of led me to this. Adapting to the change. Story for another time. Yeah, story for another time. So I found a buyer and I packed up the studio and moved it into my house. Well, there's way more details to that, but again, story for another time. And that's where I've been operating from for the last three years. Wait a second, hang on, counting my fingers. Four years, yes, four years. Wow, holy shoot, four years. So after I sold the store, I was ready to put that money into the next venture. Get myself a studio space, woo hoo, -hoo. Uh, That didn't happen. Uh, so I had to come up with a new plan. So I sat down long and hard to figure out what can I do? What do I like to do? There was so much aspect that I loved at my store that I deeply missed. And one of the huge things that my store was known for was wacky commercials, my live sales. It made my business super successful and I knew how to do all that stuff. Shoot, edit, be in front of a camera, all that stuff. And then it dawned on me, not all businesses know how to do that. They have to hire out people to do that. The next logical thing in your mind might be saying, okay, cool, he's gonna start a production company, freelance company, just like everybody else would do. Yes, but with a big twist. And that twist is built on a motto. Just because you don't know how to do something doesn't mean you need to get taken advantage of. So that's where I formed my new company, Create Impact. It was gonna be a subscription-based content creation company. Yeah, I don't know what to call it because it doesn't exist. It's, nothing's ever been done like this before. I wanted to go around and talk to the local businesses and help them grow online, do the things that made my store successful, but for other people at a price that they could actually afford. But what does this all mean exactly? Well, it's pretty, pretty simple and really cool. Small businesses, I know, I've owned one. Any dollar that you spend is taken away from your rent, your utility bills, your dinner, <laughs> you know? So forking out a ton of cash to hire a creative is just not feasible for a lot of companies or small businesses. But how could I make a, my business successful and still make their business successful to where we're all happy? Well, that enters the subscription base, right? One price per month, low cost over the course of a couple of months. Spend what you would pay one creative to do one job and get way more for your buck. So that was the nugget of idea that I had. I was trying to make it work. It's never done before and didn't know really how to do it. So I found some people that wanted to enter in my beta program, I was calling it. It was going so well that I had businesses chomping at the bit to get into this program with me, but I just wasn't quite ready to bring them on. I was still building this thing. I had oh, arms length of a list of people. It was amazing. I would brainstorm with them, we would chat, we would come up with ideas. I was in their pocket and I was getting ready to officially launch the company after about a year of building this thing. And in March of 2020, I was about to just boom, go for it. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, <laughs> did I hear you just say March of 2020? Yeah. Oof. Wow, I'm uh, sorry to hear that. I did. That sucks. A little thing happened. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really wasn't a good time. Called COVID-19. The business was gone. The dream was over. So I had to adapt to the change once more. Literally throw out everything that I was trying to do for the past year and just survive. That's what it really came down to, was surviving. All those businesses that I was working with and about to work with, um, yeah, that all, that all disappeared like, like in almost instantly. And then it gets sadder, especially for them, because most of them aren't even in business anymore. They had to close up. That was a bad, bad, bad year for a lot of us. But I got hit pretty hard, harder than most people because I had no job. <laughs> Therefore, there was no unemployment. I was living off of what I sold my store for, which was like three months left of money by that point. I've been living off it for like two years. And then I was completely broke. 
So I dusted off my 3D printers and started 3D printing stuff to sell. Went back on what I knew how to do, which was sell things for profit. <laughs> I am good at that. I commissioned people to create me 3D files so I can print stuff that was my own. Created custom action figures and sold them on eBay and Facebook groups at live sales. I was going backwards towards the old store. But it got me through COVID. I made enough money to barely scrape by. Meanwhile, friends of mine that work for people like at McDonald's or or a bar making a thousand dollars a week just sitting at home because of their unemployment plus that little extra boost the government was giving everybody. Yeah, I, I never got any of that. <laughs> Yeah, I got a stimulus. I did get a stimulus check, though. There's a lot of perks when you work for yourself, uh, for sure. Uh, it's just not when there's a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, you kind of just literally on your own. But it got worse. The government did open up unemployment for people that did work for themselves. So they pulled their tax records from the previous year to see what you'd make. Yeah, I uh, sold my business in 2018. So 2019, which was the year that they were pulling from, I worked zero jobs. I was living solely off of what I sold my business for. So they saw that I earned zero income. Therefore, I got zero dollars for unemployment. But after several months of this, I got a call from an old client of mine that their business exploded because of the pandemic teaching people how to live stream because you know once the pandemic hit every single person in the world went to google and typed in how do i live stream because you know everything went virtual at that point so i became a videographer and video editor for live streaming pros so i've been doing that for the last year and a half or so and it's been fun so my head was starting to come up above the water i could breathe a little bit and as we approached into the new year 2021 things were picking up a little bit more small businesses needed my help more than ever however even my low price idea is still a little too much for small businesses at that time so what i was doing was this i was going to retail stores and offering free services i was hosting their live sales getting them some revenue during these hard times. Then later in the year, things started really ramping up with live streaming pros and I was focusing on that for a long time. And then this year, I felt my dream of having my own studio and my own space to create and help others and offer up services that I couldn't otherwise do was becoming just that, a dream, not a reality. It was getting farther and farther away. So I made a change. Base. I'll go subway. It's going to be an adventure. <laughs> So this year I embarked upon my next adventure, fulfilling the lifelong dream of having my own video production studio. I gotta tell you though, there's been so much painting that I've done to this thing, it's ridiculous. That was part of the most time consuming process of all of this. That includes moving everything in. I think that was the easiest part. So earlier this year I decided to basically just bet on myself. 
go for it. I had an original plan in place to be able to get a studio space within the first five years of opening my business, Create Impact. But since that aspect of the business probably can't happen for a little while, the economy's starting to pick up, businesses are starting to thrive again, but they're still just not at a point where I think they can really afford these types of extra services, even though it's something that would greatly benefit them, and I'm still gonna strive for that. That aspect of the business is sort of on pause, and I'm going with the more traditional route at the moment. And freelance it, one-off stuff, which is something I never really wanted to do. I really wanted to work with people individually, closely, help them, educate them, offer a place that they can come and, and, and thrive, grow their business. Instead of the traditional, it's very transactional, I, I just don't like that. But that is where I'm kind of at at the moment. So I was able to find a place that's reasonable in price that I don't have to worry too much about making rent and still be able to offer it up to people whoever would like to use it. And honestly, this is a public space. If you want to use this space, anyone watching this, you're allowed to. You can come in and use it and I'll help you. I want to open up some workshops and some classes and teach the younger generation or the older generation, whoever it might be how to use cameras, how to shoot, how to light, how to run audio, how to edit videos, how to start a YouTube channel, like all of that aspect. That's what I want to do. So here I am, it's kind of sink or swim time, and I've shown myself time and time again that I am fully capable of so many things that I have just never thought I could do. Just have a really good feeling about this. This has been, already been a great space just for myself. No one else has been in here yet and to be able to use it. But just for me alone, it's been really nice to be able to separate work and home. I can have a place to go and then leave to go home and just relax. Normally I would just be working till midnight, one, two, three, four a.m. And then just go sleep because <laughs> it was convenient. <laughs> but it's not healthy. It's not a great way to live life. Trust me. So is this place perfect? No. <laughs> not yet, anyway. It's getting there. I got a lot of work to do. This place... It's coming along, but it's not perfect, and I don't know if it ever will be perfect. So will Create Impact ever be what I thought it was going to be? The original plan? I don't know. I hope so. I hope there's a day where that happens. But things rarely ever work out the way we want them to or hope that they do. At least that's been my experience. I try for something, and I usually get pretty close to what it was in my head, but it's never exactly what I wanted it to be. And I think that's just the way life goes. We have to roll with the punches. We have to adapt to the change. Things change all the time. Plans change. Life changes. <laughs> it changes yourself. It changes your perspective. Everything is always change. You have to be flexible. You have to keep an open mind. And you always have to prepare yourself that the thing that you are trying to do will fail. And the famous quote by Adam Savage, failure is always an option. And that's something I've always lived by. And another great quote that I have always lived by was said by Peter Dinklage, fail better. Just fail better next time and that's all you can do. And I think that's what I've always done. I have failed at so many things in life that you, would, you wouldn't even begin to comprehend. <laughs> Oh my God. I used to hold myself back all the time because I didn't know how to do it yet. So I wasn't gonna do it until it was perfect. That's the stupidest thinking anyone can ever have. Trust me, I wasted so many years on so many different things and not doing them. If you're thinking that way, and I can tell you for a fact, firsthand experience, stop that. <laughs> you have to do it first to know how to do it. You think doctors go out there, learn, educate themselves from text, watching instructional videos, and then they know how to operate? No, they have to practice. They have to go and do it. They have to freaking do it. All that to say, this place here is kind of that for me. I'm finally, I'm just betting on myself. I'm going for it. Enough is enough. I have my studio, I have my dream, and I know I can do it. I know I, I, know I got this. So in summary, I guess all I'm actually saying, hang on, what is the frick? There we go. All I'm really saying is you can't be afraid of change. You can't be afraid to make change. I've never really been one to consider myself any sort of person to try and inspire other people. I've just been one to try and help people understand things, educate them, but I've never been one to try and like preach inspiration. Like you can do it. Woo, rally the troops. But 
I guess this video has kind of turned into that, hasn't it? <laughs> because I guess I am kind of a great example of a lot of things. Like you can learn a lot just from my failures and my attempts, the struggles that I've actually gone through that I've left out of this video. I've done a lot of things. I'm only 32 years old. I mean, it sounds old, but really it's not that old. I've lived an interesting life so far. Yeah, I mean, I've built houses, door to door salesmen. I was a sales associate. I sold Legos. I've owned businesses. I fueled aircrafts at Portland International Airport. That was a terrible job. I was a lab chemist. I did R&D on diesel and biodiesel fuels. I worked with CEOs of companies like Google and Caterpillar and so many others. And that's, that's a story for itself. I might need to share that story one day. Is a Washington lab faking critical fuel tests while taxpayers foot the bill? Yeah, it's a wild one. You know that classic phrase, if I can do it, you can do it. I hope that if you've seen this video and seen what I've gone through a little bit and I've left again so much out, that literally you could do it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see it. this video got away from me a little bit. I was just wanting to be like, hey, it's my 200th video on this channel and I have a studio. I kind of want to show it off a little bit. It's really got away from me. I don't even know what this is. Funny fact though, this may be the 200th video on my channel, but I've made hundreds more on various other channels I've been a part of. But this one has been my personal channel and it's kind of special to me. It's, it, this channel has seen everything. It has a taste and element of every single thing I've ever done. Even across other channels, this has it. So if you're curious to see a little bit more about my past, why not refine the videos on my page to oldest and work your way forward that way? You can see the change from there. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And I'll see you on the 400th episode. Knock it out there. Make some art. But don't worry, you'll see me in the 201 episode. Got some good ones coming. Can't wait to share it. And you won't see this ridiculous hat next time. So, bye.